are those that bring you close to nature. Hello and welcome to the Interior Show. I'm Adhiti Singh and joining me on the show today we have an architect, Rubal Dhuna, whose philosophy of design revolves around celebrating nature. Hello, I'm Rubal Dhuna. I'm an architect and interior designer based in Mumbai. After a short stint in America, designing commercial and high-end residential projects, I moved back to Mumbai in 2009 to establish my design studio called Rubel Dhuna Architects. I take every project um, as a chance to reinvent my understanding and application of design. My practice is very versatile. Over the past seven years, we've been working on a wide range of projects. We've designed luxury apartments, commercial spaces, and high-end retail outlets. One of my favorite projects is the Bandit Queen showroom. Uh, Bandit Queen is a high-end home linen brand. Apart from this, we've also designed a line of products for Nomad 97% India, which went on to receive their Dida Award in the product category. A well-designed space is a perfect balance between materials, colors, and texture. I try and bring in subtle sophistication and elegance to my spaces. I consciously refrain from overdoing. Hi, Rubul. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hello, welcome. Now, Rubul, tell us something about yourself. Uh, you know, let's, let's talk specifically about what inspires you the most. Well, I would say my inspiration comes primarily from the context, uh, the outside environment, the sounds, the light in a space. Um, also, if the client's aspirations are very important for me. Yeah. And I try and uh, create efficient spaces based okay. on their okay. aspirations. Okay, so you talked about uh, playing with light and sound and these are uh, natural elements uh, that are part of your design and I can see a lot of that in this office, uh, in this beautiful office, a lawyer's office that we're sitting, like I have to say it's anything but mundane. The first thought was, you know, we wanted as soon as one enters the space, we wanted to experience the entire volume, yeah. you know, and of course appreciate the outside. Um, so we tried and created fewer barriers. Uh, we've moved uh, the storage to the two walls that were available. So like you see, this, the, we showcase the books uh, to one side rather than creating barriers in the space. We wanted to keep the palette very simple uh, yeah. and restricting it to about two to three materials because yeah. the books were going to play, uh, you know, all the color was coming from yes. the books. So we've kept it neutral and natural. And um, so the wood floor adds yeah. uh, a touch of uh, warmth. warmth. And uh, a soft texture on the walls was all that we wanted. Yeah. So, Rubul, uh, I really want to go around this whole space and see how you've done it up. So, where do you want to take me? Let's uh, move over to the reception. Let's start there. Okay. So, Rubel, you've got me to this beautiful reception area of the office. I have to say, it doesn't look like it's a reception space of a corporate office because usually it's quite boring. Now, tell me, how have you done this up? Well, we had a really tight corner for this informal meeting space. Uh, what we did was, we firstly, we've put in a round table yeah. uh, so that uh, you know the corners are free to move around. Yeah. Uh, also, we've added this mirror on one wall. Mm -hmm. What this does is it reflects this beautiful library and it uh, brings the greens inside. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, we've sourced these uh, chairs. Uh, it was actually a find from uh, a flea market. Okay. And uh, we had to scrape them down completely and repolish them to match the floor. Okay. And they have a very antique uh, finish to it, a look. They are. Yeah. Also because they are rounded, it, it works really well in this yeah. space. We've uh, also molded the little uh, yeah. Karara marble okay. to soften the edges. So that's the tip you would like to give to people who have smaller spaces. Don't go yeah, for don't rectangular go with edges. edges. Yeah. yeah, don't go with edges. Go for uh, circular shaped mm -hmm. tabletops or chairs. Now tell me about uh, the books. I think they really add a lot of color to this space. Well, in any lawyer's office, you know, you have a lot of books that one can showcase. And uh, we did segregate, uh, you know, these sets of colors on this side and yeah. we used uh, the mix on the other side. Okay. The library was designed in a way that we uh, optimized the storage. Now, Rubel, before we move on to the other side, one thing I've been meaning to ask you is that this office has a high ceiling, right? Now, and there's a door that actually extends from the floor till the ceiling. How did you manage to get the, a door of this size? The client had found these really beautiful old teak uh, panels yeah. again in a flea market, and um, he wanted to use this 
somewhere in this space. Okay. Uh, they were quite short, about seven feet. Um, after a lot of trials and errors, we yeah. decided to uh, combine the panels mm -hmm. up and take it all the way up to the beam. Okay. Uh, we had to, um, you know, scrape it down. We've lime washed it mm -hmm. uh, and uh, polished it. And now, as we enter through that door, um, there's a huge space. And on one side, there are spots of colors coming through the books. Why talk about all these elements standing here? Let's go further and check it out and look, have a look at them more closely. Sure. So Rugal, first thing that's very striking in this room is the view outside. And that was the first uh, major design element. And uh, you've treated the wall in a way that the view outside actually, you know, becomes part of this decor. So tell us about it. We've aligned each of these partitions yeah. uh, right under the beams so that the window becomes the center of the space. Okay. Uh, of course, we've placed the table then uh, in line with with the window okay. and uh, it becomes the focal yeah. point of the room. Yeah, it does. But uh, why such a huge table? Is it because there was a lot of space available? No, in fact, uh, in the brief, they needed a table uh, okay. because they have meetings with about 12 to 15 people at one time. Yeah. And therefore, this was one of the important, okay. you know, the starting point of designing the office was to provide was the them a, size of the, the boardroom. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, you know, let's move on to the boss's room. Now, since that's his personal space, I'm sure you have done things differently there. So what is it that makes his own space? Well, uh, what we've done is uh, we've given him a statement table, uh, centered it to the room. Uh, with a nice uh, antique light, glass light that hangs on it. Yeah. Well, the backdrop uh, is a contemporary library. Yeah. It uh, holds a lot of his uh, curios, his finds mm -hmm. uh, from his travels. Well, thank you for showing me around this beautiful office that is not corporate at all in its look and feel. And there, there happens to be another office on the same floor that you've designed, which is relatively smaller. So what I want to check out is how you've managed your interiors around that space. So let's go ahead. Sure. So Rubella, tell me about this office space. One quick question is that how did you go about designing the layout of the space, keeping the constraint, space constraint in mind? As we enter into the space, uh, we move along the curved partition, uh, at the end of which there are two doors. So the door leads to the meeting room, mm -hmm. and we have a tiny um, reading room here with the library, and those steps lead up uh, to a lock. Okay. Well, you know, starting with the elements, the design elements that, uh, you know, are quite different from the ones that we saw in the previous office. First thing is the flooring. Now, uh, you have printed tiles. Could you tell us a bit more about it? Well, since the space is small, we had mutually agreed to go all white. We've added a dash of uh, color on the floor. We've used uh, these beautiful cement tiles with, uh, from Bharat flooring. So we picked up the gray from the floor yeah. and we've done um, the table in uh, micro concrete. Okay. Uh, what this does is it doesn't add another element. We've restricted mm -hmm. the color palette to about three. Mm -hmm. uh, there's the wood, okay. uh, the gray. Right. This uh, parabolic light was designed at the office. Mm -hmm. We've uh, used paper veneer for it. Okay. Uh, we went through a lot of options again for light for this space, mm -hmm. but uh, it was adding another element. So sticking with our color palette, we've uh, used wood. Rubel, coming to the loft, uh, what's more interesting is, uh, I think the staircase, I've never seen a staircase of that size, but how do you ensure that it, it's sturdy enough to take the weight? You know, the steps are such that you can put in one foot at a time. Yeah. We've also put a handrail so that it's easier to get on yeah. uh, in that fashion. Uh, we've utilized the underside of uh, the staircase yeah. uh, with these beautiful cane boxes. Yeah. Uh, I think again it goes really well with the decor. Yeah. Uh, all the other loose stuff can go into it at the end of yeah. the day. Well, Rupert, thank you so much for getting me to this office as well. Uh, you know, you've shown me two spaces that are distinct in size and nature and design as well. But what's more interesting is that moving ahead, you will be taking me to a house. I want to see how you combine your design sensibilities there. So let's go ahead. Sure, come on.
If these offices were so comforting, then imagine the magic Ruble's design style could do to a residence. And that's exactly what we're going to do, but after a short break. From, from the, the outside, space. Uh, and if you shut the, the glass door, you can use the bathroom on okay. the inside. Okay. And actually, unlike the living area, it's in the master bedroom that I see spots of colors, right? So, uh, how, how, where did this come from? Well, the decor of the room is quite minimalist. There's, yeah. uh, you see, there's just a bed and a bench in here. Uh, so we had the opportunity of bringing in uh, some color. We've sourced these uh, cushions and the bedding from Yamini. It's a um, home linen brand, yeah. which does 100% uh, cotton okay. fiber with um, traditional techniques and okay. um, contemporary prints. All right. Now, as you mentioned that uh, the space has a very minimalistic setup, uh, which is why I can only see one bed on one side and there's a small bench on the other. Since the furniture was not much, we had the opportunity to put in a lot of art in this uh, yeah. space. Like you see, every wall uh, has an assortment of yes. uh, art from various contemporary artists. You know, usually we see people experimenting a lot with headboards, but you went ahead with something straight lined. Another interesting aspect to this uh, piece of furniture is that, uh, you know, the legs were found first and okay. we've just uh, very simply put ply planks on it and yeah. polished it mm -hmm. and just taken that through on the headboard okay. uh, with a teak wood edging. Okay, mm -hmm. wow. Usually, uh, you know, we see that a bigger element comes first and the detailing is added later but yes. here the legs sure, it's actually, been the other way around. Uh, now talking about the balcony outside, I think it's a sprawling balcony and not many people have that privilege. So how did you um, sort of uh, picturize it earlier? Like what was the first uh, picture like in your mind? Sunita loves to entertain and to feed mm -hmm. people. She has a lot of people over and we wanted to put in a dining table that could seat about eight to yeah. ten people at a time. Uh, so we had to break down that wall. Mm -hmm. What that does is, um, you know, it also uh, combines the living. The f objects that she collects on her travels. Yeah. And, um, you know, we had to make sure that every piece of hers uh, gets its place yeah. and so that one can appreciate it. Okay, and uh, a great example of that is this wall. Well, this wall um, is the longest wall that was available for us uh, yeah. to experiment. Uh, she had this collection of uh, Javanese puppets okay. which um, are quite ancient yeah. and um, you know, they're characters of the Ramayana. Okay. It was a set of about 72 yeah. pieces where we've used about 30, 40 odd pieces mm -hmm. which we could you know, uh, yeah. carefully put together. Now coming to the floor, Rubul, I see that you've used dark floor. The colour is very dark uh, in comparison to the white walls that you've used. Well, firstly, um, the house has a lot of pets, um, so it needs to be a low maintenance floor. Uh, also, it anchors everything together. Uh, this is a grey slate. Okay. It has a lot of variation yeah. uh, and that flows throughout the house. Okay. And how much does this cost? This kind of floor can cost you anything between 200 to 300 rupees a square foot, 100 rupees a square foot, uh, based on the sizes that you okay. pick. Rubel, I can see a couple of uh, antique pieces of furniture. Now, this was something that she already had and you furniture accordingly. So, tell us about the sofa over here. Well, uh, she had these few chairs which she's picked up over the past 25 years. Uh, some, of them are, uh, some of them are from Kerala, uh, like this massage table here that we've converted into a centre table now. Mm -hmm. Now what uh, makes these puppets really stand out is the kind of lighting you've used to. Uh, so tell us about that. There were two reasons why we chose uh, the spotlights um, in this space. One is uh, we want to keep the entire height. So I'm not too fond of all ceilings. Okay. Yeah try it and retain the, as much as we can mm -hmm. and um, you know the spots are uh, just right you know you can turn them around to highlight different areas right yeah. now they're highlighting the puppets, puppets but if you want to bring in some light to another corner it can yeah. just be turned around okay so you haven't used too many chandeliers or heavy thing uh, no heavy we just try and kept the lighting of the architecture okay. okay now tell me about the side table rubble you actually turned a pot uh, into a base for uh, into a base for a table well, there are so many pieces of furniture in the house with so much detail that uh, to put in another one with too much detailing wouldn't yeah. work. 
So we've just kept kept a pot and put in polished. Okay. And it's a light base which works with the sofa really well. Yeah. yeah. I think another uh, you know focal point of this space would be focal point of this space would be. Uh, that chest over there uh, it's pretty huge and looks pretty old and antique so uh, has that also been brought by the client um well as you enter we had this little uh, uh spot where we could keep something and the chest just fitted here perfectly it's actually uh, an original dowry uh, okay. chest that was given to brides yeah. in kerala so it's picked okay. up um yeah a long time ago Rubel now that side of the room looks really inviting there's actually a beautiful sea view and you've turned that into a really cozy study room well actually that used to be a bedroom uh, what we've done is we've broken down the wall uh, and put in two sliding partitions okay uh, this gives you the flexibility to combine it with the living space yeah. uh, when she has a lot of people over mm -hmm. uh, you know everyone spills onto that side for okay. the view the windows were brought down all the way to bring in the sea view Uh, there's a lot of sunlight coming in through that window, so we've uh, you know draped it with these uh, bamboo blinds. Yeah, uh, that adds a lot of texture to the room. Yes, it does. In fact, when in the evening, you know, when you have sunlight falling in, it creates a beautiful Lots of patterns. Yes, beautiful texture and pattern, as you said inside. Now, uh, starting with the bookshelf that you've created for her, rearrange the couch uh, for that. Also. Uh, you know the focal point of that room would be sarnath banerjee's uh, graphic okay. library around the couch uh, for that also uh, you know the focal point of that room would be sarnath banerjee's uh, okay. graphic artwork ATA okay. and the couch just uh, nicely fits into that okay you know? so rubel having looked at the common area i'm actually eager to see how you've done up her master bedroom because she has a great taste in art so i really want to see how you've complemented that with your designs sure let's have a look so rubel this happens to be the master bedroom The first thing that I noticed when I entered was that there are actually two doors. Well, there is a bathroom in the middle of that corridor. What we wanted to do is uh, give them the flexibility uh, to use it to the outside. Once this bedroom door shuts, yeah. you can use the bathroom from, from the, the outside. Space. Uh, and if you shut the the glass door, you can the the glass door you can use the bathroom on okay. the inside. Okay. And actually, unlike the living area. It's in the master bedroom that I see spots of colors, right? So, well, the decor of the room is quite minimalist. There's, yeah. uh, if you see, there's just a bed and a bench in here. Uh, so we had the opportunity of bringing in uh, some color. We sourced these uh, cushions and the bedding from Yamini. It's a um, home linen brand, yeah. which does uh, 100% cotton okay. fiber with. Um, traditional techniques and okay. uh, contemporary prints all right now as you mentioned that uh, the space has a very minimalistic setup uh, which is why i can only see one bed on one side and there's a small bench on the other since the furniture was not much we had there was not much we had the opportunity to put in a lot of art in this uh, yeah. space like you see every wall Uh, has an assortment of yes. uh, art from various contemporary artists. You know, usually with headboards, but you went ahead with something straight lined. Another interesting aspect to this uh, piece of furniture is that uh, you know the legs were found first, and okay. we've just uh, very simply put ply planks on it and yeah. polished it, mm -hmm. and we've just taken that through on the headboard okay. uh, with a teak wood edging. Okay. Teak wood edging. Okay. Wow. Usually, uh, you know, we see that a bigger element. comes first and the detailing is added later but yes. here the legs sure, actually been the other way around uh, now talking about the balcony outside i think it's a sprawling balcony not many people have that privilege so how did you realize uh, it earlier like what was the first uh, picture like in your mind sunita loves to entertain and to feed mm -hmm. people she has a lot of people over and we wanted to put in a dining table that could seat about 8 yeah. to 10 people at a time Uh, so we had to break down that wall mm -hmm. what that does is um, you know it also uh, combines the living space yeah. uh, and with the and there is with the balcony and there's an extended seating for the yeah. Uh, yeah. at point of time she can have a gathering of yeah. uh, 30 for 80 people and uh, since you know a dining table is in a balcony what i noticed was that you've covered the ceiling with a thin layer of sheet the beams that you see are structural mm -hmm. uh, it's a coffered slab and it was meant to be open however to 
to be able to use the terrace at all times. So yeah. We've covered it with a polycarbonate sheet okay. uh, that just softens the light in this place and yeah. makes it a weatherproof terrace okay. to use at all times. Okay. And moving further into the balcony, you've also given a, a, a bar unit to her, and uh, right above the bar unit. I, I saw an interesting uh, assortment of uh, really antique looking kitchen accessories. Under the bar unit is the utility section uh, and above it um, the mural kind of thing that you see is yeah. actually uh, you know really old wooden uh, cooking uh, utensils yeah. and she was just about to throw them okay. uh, and didn't know what to do with it. Yeah. Uh, but I thought, you know, placing you it in an interesting of... pattern yeah. uh, and putting it up on the wall. Yeah, so you caught hold of her at the right time. Right time. Okay. <laughs> well, that really worked. I think that, that's a piece of art in itself mm -hmm. and that's the highlight also. Now, uh, Rubel, thank you so much for taking me around this beautiful house. I think it's as modern yet as... Um, you know, earthy as it could get and you've combined the two very beautifully. Now moving ahead, we're going to have some viewers queries coming your way. So I need you to get up for that. Sure. Well, with that, it's time for another breather on the show. But don't go anywhere because on the other side, all that you ever wanted to know about having your own mini library, well, that's coming up in just a bit. You know, we do really slim skirtings. Okay. I use a lot of uh, teak wood and polish. Um, it adds a lot of warmth to it. It does work out less expensive because uh, there's no civil work involved. You can just uh, slam uh, a wooden skirting onto an existing wall. Yeah. Welcome back. Now, how many times have you thought of having an exclusive library to yourself but discarded that idea because you didn't have enough space? Well, worry no more because Rubel is here to tell us how you can utilize your space efficiently to create a mini library of your own. Well, Rupal, in Mumbai, uh, you don't have enough space, especially in two BHKs, right? Now, is it still possible to carve out a library? Well, you can always uh, find a nice uh, glass cabinet uh, in Chor Bazaar where you can uh, stack your books. Uh, also, you can combine it with your entertainment unit. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can always intersperse books with curios. Uh, okay. That just uh, breaks the monotony of the whole thing. Okay. Now, can one actually experiment with bookshelves to an extent that it can act, uh, you know, as a design element in itself? Well, you can create bookshelves with various materials. You can have, uh, you know, just teak wood shelves. You can do that in uh, metal if you want a contemporary sleeker look. Uh, you can put them in vertical cabinets if yeah. you want to uh, save up on floor space or go horizontal. Uh, and you know, un under a television unit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That, and there you have a library. And combine it uh, with all your gadgets. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you for all that information on, uh, you know, library and uh, designing bookshelves. Now, with that, we move to the viewer's query. So, are you ready for the first question? Okay. So, Saloni from New Delhi writes into us mentioning her new apartment has got a spacious bathroom. She wants a hammam vibe for the bathroom. How can she work around it? Well, the way I would design it uh, would be I would go all natural stone. Uh, I would do a built-in bathtub, lots of built-in niches where one can put in uh, candles and, you know, incense. Mm -hmm. um, so natural stone is the trick? You, she should natural, stick to natural Yeah, stones. I would nat pick up a natural stone with a good grain. Okay. Also, one could do a really nice, interesting light in the space Yeah. Um, with um, controlled automated lighting. Okay. Controlled automated lighting. Okay. So you can change the mood. Yeah. Yeah, you create a beautiful effect and she can spend as much time as she wants in her mom. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, let's address Kalpesh's query from Mumbai. The apartment gets too many cracks. How do I resolve this issue? I'm not a great fan of fall ceilings, but if one has to do it, I would uh, keep it as minimal as possible. Uh, one way to still have the sense of, uh, you know, the height is to uh, keep the fall ceilings a little off the walls okay. and add a cove lighting in it. Okay, okay. Well, uh, now let's address Sushmita's query from Kolkata. She writes asking if there are other materials apart from marble for skirting since it's expensive. If yes, will the other materials affect the aesthetic of the skirting in the house? Well, earlier the skirtings uh, would be 6-6 six, six inches like we used to have it in our homes yeah. um, you know, a while ago. But now, uh, you know, we do really slim skirtings. Okay. I use a lot of uh, teak wood and polish. Um, it adds a lot of warmth to the space. 
So in comparison with marbles, you think wood is uh, relatively less expensive? Well, it does work out less expensive because uh, there's no civil work involved. You can just uh, slam uh, a wooden skirting onto an existing wall. Yeah. So you don't get into the painting. And okay. And okay. That. So, well, she should definitely go ahead with wood in that case. Well, uh, with that, we come to the last query of the day, Rubel. Suhail writes to us on Facebook and he says, I love meditation and yoga. I have a corner in my new house for the same. What kind of color palette and accessories should I opt for uh, for my new meditation room? I would just keep the room really clutter free, as white as possible, do sheer curtains, you know, um, and uh, maybe just a floor a bed, a floor cushion where yeah. one can sit and relax oneself. Yeah. Okay, so he needs to make sure that there are not too many things around him. A clutter free, free space oh, would be nice. Okay. Well, thank you for answering all those queries, Rubel. With that, we come to the end of the show and I must thank you for spending your day with us. And, uh, you know, it's, it's surprising how you've done up a corporate space just as well you've, uh, you know, beautifully done up this residence over here. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure meeting you. Thank you. Well, the last half hour did give me a fresh perspective on the use of natural materials for interior design. With that, it's time for a wrap, but you know we'll be back next week, same time, with yet another episode of The Interior Show. Until then, goodbye and keep watching Magic Breaks Now.